In this video, we're talking about the seven steps you need to take to start a photography business. My name is Wes, and on this channel, you'll find tips, tools, and text to help you grow as a creative. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get into the video. Step number one, know what kind of photography business you wanna start. There are a million different genres you could go in. Some make no money at all, some make a lot of money. But let me say this to start with. You need to be passionate about whatever niche you get into because if you're not, the business side of this will kill your dreams. So make sure that whatever genre you choose, you're passionate about that and push forward. You need to also have a foundational understanding of cameras because if you don't, then you're not gonna put out the work that keeps getting you clients. So that's something you need to think about. If you don't understand cameras, you don't understand photography yet, then you need to wait a little bit and learn before you move forward with a business. Are you gonna shoot film? Are you gonna shoot digital? Those are things you need to really be thinking about because film and digital are two completely different types of mediums and some people are gonna want film, say, you know, a wedding client. And if you don't know how to shoot film, you can't give them what they want. So. You really need to think about those things when it comes to starting this kind of business. Step number two, invest in the right tools. If you were a nature photographer, you wouldn't use the same gear that you would for real estate photography. You wouldn't use a 400 millimeter lens to shoot the interior of a home. So think about the scenarios that you're gonna be shooting. Is this the kind of gear that you need to capture those images? Let's use weddings, for example. You need to decide, are you gonna have one body or you're gonna have two bodies? Things happen really fast in weddings and you need to be able to pull up either your telephoto lens to capture something or you either need to pull up a shorter lens to capture something that's closer to you. By having two bodies, you have that ability to switch out fast and get the images that you need. You need to be thinking about dual card slots and expecting that one of your cards may one day crash. I've had that happen before where I was on a wedding shoot, the camera I had only had a single card slot and that card corrupted and I lost the kiss. That's like one of the most important parts of the wedding is the kiss. Luckily, I was shooting with another photographer and they captured the kiss. So it wasn't completely gone, but they missed out on a lot of good images that I had captured for them. So you need to be thinking like tight spaces. So when a wedding starts and people are getting ready, they're usually in a hotel room or they're in a bedroom somewhere getting ready, getting makeup done, getting their dresses on. And you're not going to be able to fit in there or even shoot anything if you have a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. So you need to be thinking about that 16 to 35 millimeter to capture those moments, right? You need to think about, does your camera handle low lights? For instance, if you're shooting a reception at the end of a wedding, then chances are it's at nighttime or it's low lit and you need something that's gonna be able to boost up that brightness and so you can capture those moments, right? So you need to be thinking about a Sony full frame or a Canon full frame. So really you just need to make sure that you find the right gear for the right job. Another thing you need to think about is your budget. Do you have enough money to pay for the gear that you need to use for this scenario? If not, how are you gonna get that money? Are you gonna do a business loan? Are you gonna have a partner? Are you gonna rent the gear that weekend for that wedding? You know, you need to think about those things because this is a business, right? So you need more money coming in than you have going out. And if you're spending all of that and you're not making anything, then you're not a successful business. And step number three might scare some people, but you need to legalize your company. That means you need to go down to your chamber of commerce, register your company. Do you want to be a sole proprietor or do you want to be an LLC? With LLC, you get a lot more protection. So if you're doing commercial photography and you get sued by a multi-million dollar company, they're not suing you personally, they're suing your company, right? So you need to have those protections in place. So those are things you need to think about. And you can go online for a lot of these things and set these up online and pay online. So you don't have to go down to the you know Chamber of Commerce and actually apply in person. You can just do this online. And you need to be thinking about taxes. So you gotta pay taxes, right? So you need to figure out how do you pay those taxes. Here in Hawaii, we have something called the GET. You just go online, you pay it. But you know every place is different. So you need to figure out how you pay your taxes. You also need to consider, are you gonna hire people are you gonna have an employee that needs a w-2 and employee benefits or are you hiring a freelance contractor that needs to submit a w-9 and you give a 1099 at the end of the year if you pay someone more than six hundred dollars a year then you need to send them a 1099 so you need to consider how is this gonna work for you do you need an assistant or are you gonna be just completely solo and number four is a big one this is the dream killer for creative entrepreneurs and that's accounting and bookkeeping you got to keep track of what's coming in you got to keep track of what's going out who you paid the software that you bought the batteries that you bought for your camera all these things you have to keep track of so that you know whether or not you're profitable you know what kind of taxes you got to pay you know all those things that just keep 
keep you up all night long. Now you could do this all yourself and spend all your creative energy keeping up with your books and tracking all your expenses and all the incoming money, or you can hire an accountant, which tend to be fairly expensive. As for me, I use a platform called FreshBooks. It does my invoicing, it does my time tracking, it does my expenses, tells me how much taxes I owe, it keeps me in contact with my clients, lets them pay online, everything. It's an all-in-one solution for my business. If taking away the headache and the nightmare of running a business sounds awesome to you, there's a link in my description for a 30-day free trial. As someone who's used FreshBooks for over five years, I I can promise you they'll save you time, it'll save you energy, and you can focus on running your business and being creative because that's what we love to do, right? So I highly recommend it. Please check that out. Step number five, you want to establish your brand online. And that means you need to decide, are you going to use your personal name? Are you going to use an artist name? Or are you going to use some sort of a brand name? And while you're doing that, I would search around, hunt on the URLs and and the social media platforms to see if those names are even available because if they're not you've wasted most of your time now as far as a website goes i use squarespace squarespace is super simple easy to use i just turn on a theme i put my images there on the first page people go to that website they know what my photography is all about you would want to make sure that all of the images on that front page are the things that you want people to know this you for right so if you're a wedding photographer then you would put a bunch of wedding photos on that first page that way they know ahead of time what they're getting into, right? Secondly, you wanna think about your social media accounts. Uh, if you're a wedding photographer, chances are you probably won't do well if you put dogs or your food last night or a bunch of selfies of you because people aren't hiring you for those things. People are hiring you for weddings. So make sure that everything they see is all about weddings. Either you establish a new account for weddings and save your personal account for all those other things, or you try to pivot those accounts that you already have existing, uh, but make sure they align to your brand. Also, you need to think about branding as community engagement, right? So if someone leaves you a comment, someone leaves you a DM, like you need to make sure that you're on top of it and you're responding to those people because that in itself is branding. Um, you know, people want to know that you're a reliable company. People want to know that you respond. People even want to know that you answer questions and that you can help them get the solution to their problem because essentially a business is solving someone's problem, right? So. Uh, make sure you're there, make sure you're available, and make sure that you build a good community around your product. And step number six, know how to price yourself. And before we get started, let me say this. For every single transaction you make with a client, make sure there's a contract. Because, and I hate to say this, but if there's not a contract, chances are a client will take advantage of you. That means they'll want more images than you promised them. That means they'll want more edits or re-edits than you wanted. So make sure everything that you do is in a contract and that it's stated, this is what they pay for, this is what it costs them, and this is what you give them. Nothing more, and don't be afraid to push back and say, no, this is not in the contract. Um, because if you give them any leeway, they'll take it. And I hate to say that, and I'm not trying to bash clients, but it's the reality of working as a creative. People don't understand what it is to be a creative and how we make money. Okay, back to knowing how to price yourself, you need to know what kind of industry you're in. Are you shooting commercial photography? Are you shooting wedding photography? For a commercial shoot, you would charge like a day labor. You would charge by the license of the image. You might even sell an image outright to that client. But you wouldn't do the same thing for a wedding client. With a wedding client, you would create a wedding photography package. That would include the day of shoot. That might include an engagement shoot. That might include a photo album. That might include whatever else you, you want to throw into that. Um, but you wouldn't price that the same way as you would a commercial shoot. At the end of the day, you got to eat. You got to pay yourself. You got to pay your assistants. You got to pay your vendors. You got to pay for all these things to make photo shoots happen. So. You really need to consider what is it gonna take for me to make a profit on this photo shoot and that's how you need to charge your client. Step number seven and the question you've been waiting for, how do you get clients? Well, first, a client is anyone who pays you money, right, for your service. So a client can be a bride and groom, it can be a family with a, an outing at the beach that day, uh, it can be anyone who pays you for your photography, but also think about this, a client can also be another photographer. And I say that because Starting out in the photography world, it's so competitive, there's a ton of people. But in order to break through, you can go work for other photographers and be an assistant or a second shooter on a wedding. Um, it helps you to learn the ins and outs of the industry, helps you to get some experience under your belt. You can see how they talk to the client, how they interact, 
and just how they run a photography business. And that's gonna help you tenfold. So I would say work for a photographer for a while and after about 15 shoots or so, you can branch out on your own and do your own gigs. Another way you can get clients is ask your friends and family to recommend you to folks. You know that in their network of friends and family that they also have someone they know having a baby soon or who's engaged or might need some photography for who knows what. But that's a great resource to tap into because they're your friends and family, they're your advocates, they're already supporting you, right? So I would tap into those networks. You may also wanna consider using industry networks and resources, such as Facebook pages where photographers hang out. A lot of the times photographers might be overbooked and might need to pass on a client to another photographer. Or there's places like here in Hawaii, we have a wedding network which pairs couples with photographers, with vendors, with wedding planners. Um, even They even do that on a national level. So you may even wanna look into those kind of things as a resources to help you get clients. All right, as we land this plane, let me just say one more thing. Never, ever, ever trade photography for exposure. Brands might approach you and say, if you take this photo shoot for free, you'll get the exposure because they'll see your photography. Anyone who's looking at their catalog is not looking at their catalog to see who took the photos. They're looking at the catalog to buy the product. And basically they just made a profit off of your work. You spent too much time, too much money, too much education and too much energy on growing this skill so that you can provide for yourself and provide for your family. And it's worth every penny that you can charge for that. So whatever you do, do not give your work away free for exposure. Also, don't undercharge for your work. You deserve to get paid what you're worth. And when you get paid what you're worth, the whole industry benefits. A rising tide lifts all ships. So if you found value in this video, you found it super helpful, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you know the next time one of my videos drop. And until next time, aloha shoots.